So welcome to the introduction to Scanner Killer Core. We're going to start the software by clicking on the desktop icon and that will start a splash screen and a few seconds later the Scanner Killer Core GUI will pop up. So there it is and what Scanner Killer Core does is it extracts scale accurate 3D data from stereo paired photography. On the left I have an Internet Explorer window open with a project file or project folder called FISH. If I double click that folder you'll see there are three subfolders within FISH. Uh, it's very important to use the folder and file naming convention that we specify in the documentation because Scanner Killer Core looks for these specific folder names. So if we pop into camera one for a moment you'll see a series of photographs of a checkerboard target in various positions and various angles relative to camera one. This is what's used to create our calibration and this camera has already been calibrated and I know that because there is a camera one .tcl file here and uh, we'll describe the procedure for calibrating your cameras in a um, additional video. So if I pop back for just one moment and we go back into camera two, you're going to see uh, similar images um, uh, taken of this checkerboard target in line simultaneously with camera one. And again, there is a camera two TCL file here, which if I open that, just to show you, uh, really defines the parameters for camera two. Things such as relative position and angles between your stereo paired cameras, principal points, lens distortions, pixel ratios, pixel sizes, and an overall camera matrix. So uh, this really defines the, your fingerprint uh, for camera two and is what Scanner Killer Core needs to accurately extract 3D data. So we'll go ahead and close that, go back to our root folder and pop into pictures. Pictures are the stereo paired images of the object or the subject that we're shooting. Uh, in this case it's a fish, a static fish, and you'll see the files are named camera1 underscore 01, 02, 03, 04, and so on. And we take stereo pairs around our object and the reason for this is that once we extract the data from the individual stereo pairs you're going to want to assemble this data into a three-dimensional object. You can only extract what you can see and obviously a camera can never at any given time see an entire 3D object at once. So we do that in uh, sections. And you'll notice that for every camera 1 underscore 01 there is a matching camera 2 underscore 01 or with the same file name and that's because the way the technology works is on based on stereo pairs. You'll also see that there are a series of masked folders or, or masked images sorry at the bottom of this stack uh, and what these masked images do is they constrain the solution if I open one of the masked images you'll see it's a very simple black and white images, image and areas defined as white will be extracted whereas anything in black which is really our background green screen in this case will be simply ignored so that's a powerful thing it saves you the time of having to remove uh, erroneous data later on in, in post work so if we go to our GUI uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna start in the build tab which is the default tab software begins in and we're simply going to go to our project folder and the project folder is this fish folder that I've uh, displayed here on the left. So if I open this I'm actually already pointing to that fish subfolder and if I click open the first thing that you'll see are all the stereo pairs uh, become populated in my stereo pairs window in the GUI. And these stereo paired numbers match the stereo pairs located in the pictures subfolder. So you'll notice they're numbered sequentially from 0, 01 all the way to 20. And if I move down the stack in the GUI, you'll see that they're numbered from again 0, 01 to 20. There's an M and the M identifies these stereo pairs as actually having a mask associated with that stereo pair. If uh, for whatever reason you didn't have a mask then these numbers would show up uh, absent of the letter M. So this is just a very simple identifier that lets you know that there is a mask associated with the file. So in terms of how to process a stereo pair at this stage, uh, it's very simple. We simply select the stereo pair or pairs that we want to process. Um, we're just going to do one to keep it simple. Choose the export options for the 3D file, OBJs, VRML, PLY, or STL. OBJ supports UV texture coordinates. Uh, 
uh, VRML 2.0 also supports uh, UV textures. Uh, Ply, on the other hand, only supports color per vertex, and STL supports no color information at all. So we're going to use OBJ and Ply for this example. And if I just quickly open up the Settings tab, most of these numbers you typically won't need to change. Uh, the one primary number you may change is the matching iteration maximum value. And what this will do is actually um, set the, the search criteria of uh, the, the stereo pattern matching algorithm. Now 12 sometimes is a little bit high, so I'm going to set this back to 6, especially for core, and uh, leave all the other numbers the same. Uh, the other values here are all defined in the documentation that comes with the software. Smoothing is simply the uh, level of smoothing that you may or may not wish to apply to the final uh, 3D output. One is essentially off. Uh, image reduction can further reduce the resolution of the output. And then the next three settings, maximum edge length, maximum angle, and clipping plane uh, give you the ability to, to remove data that may not be the, of the most ideal. Uh, areas that are occluded or that occur on the side of an object typically um, are, are not ideal. Uh, be, because there's not as much um, pixel information to represent that area. So setting these numbers later on will allow you to automatically remove areas of fall off or occluded areas. But we're not going to turn them on at the moment. We're going to leave them. Parallel processors uh, allow you to set additional processors. So if you have a multi-threaded, multi-core machine, certainly you can use additional processors. And then when we process our stereo pairs, if you're processing more than one, it will process them simultaneously. So again, we're going to keep this off for now. Click Apply and just pop up into Batch for one moment. And if I do that, you'll see that our Batch queue at this time is empty. That's because we've added no stereo pairs into our queue. So I'm going to go back to Build. And again, we've selected stereo pair 01. Now if I click Add, and go back into the batch queue, you'll see that the 01 stereo pair for fish has been added and the output that we've uh, selected is OBJ and Ply. So the next thing to do is simply to click process. The average processing time for a pair of stereo images uh, typically is on the order of about two to three minutes. So depending on your machine and the, the power of your machine, this may take a little bit longer or process a little bit quicker, but on average, assume two to three minutes. Okay, so now it's exporting the VRML and in just a moment later it'll start exporting the OBJ. Now what's important to note is that Core is a light version of our Scanner Killer Pro software, so regardless of the input images that you give it, it will always output approximately 130,000 polygons. That's a limitation of Scanner Killer Core. And uh, provided you don't uh, feed it images less than 4 megapixels, that will always be the case. And now we're exporting the OBJ and the ply, and that is done. So if I pop back, pop back into my project folder, you're going to see that there's a new subfolder now called Stereo Pair 01M. And if I go in there, you'll see two additional subfolders for OBJ and Ply. These are the 3D file outputs that we had selected earlier. And in the OBJ, there's always an OBJ, an MTL, and the JPEG, which is your camera to photograph. It's always used as the reference color texture map. So if I go ahead and double click that, it's going to open in a software called InnovMetric. This is just a simple 3D viewer. Any 3D viewer or any 3D package that supports OBJs will be able to open these files. And let me just move this over to the side. Perfect. So this is the 3D data without the texture map being displayed at the moment. So you can see I can zoom in on that. Uh, that is the extracted scale accurate 3D geometry of those two photographs. Now, if I turn on the color for a moment, there we go, and turn off the lights, you can see that if I zoom in, what we have is a UV texture correspondence. So it's mapping the photograph directly onto the geometry. And that's a great thing because it allows you to retain the original photography and the high resolution pixel information associated with whatever camera you might have used to acquire the photographs in the first place. 
And if I go into dynamic mode, you'll see it just simply transitioning between those. But it's perfect color registration, and the reason for that is, is that because we derive the geometry obviously from the color photographs, the color photographs are perfectly matched. So I'm just going to close this for a moment, and we're going to open up the ply, because apply supports what's called color pervertex. So it doesn't have the same high resolution color depth information, and there is actually no texture, which is why you don't see anything popping up at the moment. But if I go into vertex color, what you're seeing now are those uh, pixels are being applied to the individual vertices. So it definitely looks much lower resolution and the reason for that is that uh, to get really high color per vertex information you need a lot of points or a lot of polygons. And as I explained earlier, core outputs approximately 130,000 polygons. So you only have half of that, about 65,000 uh, points of color. So those are the differences between the two files and uh, their advantages and disadvantages to using both. Scanner Killer uh, Core does support both outputs. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you.